My name is Jeanette Boudreau, and today I'd like to take you through the steps to culture murine myeloid dendritic cells from bone marrow precursors. The myeloid DC lineage is becoming increasingly appreciated for studies of innate and adaptive immune interplay, as well as being increasingly used as a platform for vaccine development. Today we'll take you through the steps to isolate the precursor cells, put them into culture, and differentiate them into dendritic cells. Afterwards, I'll show you a flow cytometric analysis of the cells before and after maturation with the toll-like receptor ligand. The cells proliferate in vitro during the culture period, so expect to see about a five to eight-fold increase in the total number of cells compared to the precursors that you played on day zero. As well, the procedures I show you today are going to be demonstrated on an open lab bench, but to maintain sterility, I'd recommend doing your cultures in a biological safety cabinet or a laminar flow hood. To begin, you'll need a 10 mil syringe with a 25 gauge needle filled with PBS, a pair of curved forceps, a pair of straight forceps, sharp scissors, and a pair of blunt scissors that can be used to clip bone. After euthanizing the donor mouse, prepare the legs for incision by spraying them with 70% ethanol. Firmly grasp the mouse's ankle using blunt forceps and use sharp scissors to carefully cut away the skin and muscle tissue of the legs. Begin at the Achilles tendon to remove the skin from the posterior portion of the leg, being careful not to damage the bone. Next, clip away the skin and muscle from the anterior portions of the leg. After this step, the deep muscle tissue of the leg should be exposed. Slide one arm of the curved forceps between the tibia and remaining muscle to break the connective tissue that holds them together, and use sharp scissors to cut the tendons at each end, freeing the muscle to be removed. Continue to clean the musculature from the tibia in this way until the bone is exposed and no muscle tissue remains. To clean the femur, grasp the knee joint with the blunt forceps and use the curved forceps to once again tease away the surrounding muscle tissue. Cut away the remaining musculature with the scissors, being careful not to damage the bone. Continue to clean away muscle tissue until the head of the femur is clearly exposed within the hip joint. Slide the bone scissors along the femur and over the greater trochanter into the hip joint. With one firm cut, separate the bone and place it into PBS on ice. If many dendritic cells are required, the second leg may also be harvested. To remove the bone marrow, ensure that there is no muscle tissue remaining at the extremities of the bone. Then, using the bone scissors, separate the bones at the knee joint, then cut off the epiphyses of the first bone. Insert the tip of the needle into the center of the bone and push firmly on the syringe plunger to force the bone marrow into a clean dish. Continue until you can see that the marrow has been completely flushed and repeat this with the remaining bones. Using the rubber end of a plunger from a one mil syringe, gently dissociate the bone marrow into a single cell suspension by mashing with an up and down motion. Collect the bone marrow into a conical centrifuge tube, rinse the dish with PBS and add this to the tube. Pellet the cells by centrifugation for 5 minutes at 1500 RPM. At this point, some researchers will include a step to lyse red blood cells. However, we have found that this step is unnecessary. Resuspend the pellet in DC media and count on a hemocytometer. This preparation is a mixture of bone marrow cells and a fraction are capable of differentiating into dendritic cells. The provision of GMCSF will favor the development of DCs, but not the other cell types. Therefore, it is unnecessary to deplete the other cells. For plating, we must count the bone marrow cells, but not the erythrocytes. These are the biggest and brightest cells. For example, in this field, we would count these cells, but not these ones. It's time to plate the cells. For DC culture, we do not use culture-coated plates. DCs differentiate best in polystyrene Petri plates. Plate the cells at a density of 200,000 precursors per mil in DC media supplemented with 40 nanograms per mil GMCSF and incubate at 37 degrees for one week. On the third day of culture, refresh the media by adding in half of the total volume of fresh GMCSF supplemented DC media. On the sixth day, refresh the media by replacing one third of it again with GMCSF containing media. To harvest the cells on day 7, remove the media, which contains non-adherent DCs, and collect in a conical tube. Scrape the dish using a tissue culture scraper, then rinse the scraper and dish, and add this rinse to the non-adherent cells in the conical tube. At this point, you may begin your experiments. Your DCs are ready. 
This is what the cells look like on day one of culture, just after plating. Note that the cells are small, round, and non-adherent. After seven days of culture, many, but not all, of the cells have adhered to the dish. Several of the cells have developed obvious dendrites. Under these culture conditions, typically 70 to 90 percent of harvested cells are CD11C positive. At this point, the cells are differentiated but relatively immature. Researchers often choose to promote a mature phenotype by stimulating cells overnight with a toll-like receptor ligand. For example, here are some representative flow cytometry plots of DCs following overnight stimulation with CPG. Phenotypical markers of maturation are shown in the top panel. CD40 and CD86 are upregulated, as demonstrated by a shift of the blue line, which represents the stimulated population. Similarly, a dot plot depicting CD11C and IL-12 in the lower panel demonstrates production of this cytokine in response to CPG. Several modifications can now be applied to the dendritic cells. For example, they can be stimulated with toll-like receptor ligands or cytokines to improve their maturational status and antigen-presenting capacities. Additionally, many vaccine studies have applied peptide or protein pulsing to the DCs prior to their use in vivo as an immunization strategy. Best of luck with your experiments.